for me, the struggle was the amount of people and the amount of talent. Yeah. And you don't know where, I, I think I felt like me in high school where I'm like, I don't know where I belong. Who do I, who gets me here? Who understands yeah. me? You're kind of um, trying oh, to find yeah. Yeah. where you fit. And, and I tend to I think when I'm around like big groups and you know people that are have more power or confidence, I tend to get small and yeah. quiet because mm-hmm. I don't I don't like yelling. I, I don't know how to explain Fuck. it, but no, I, I, I have, you don't want to have to get bigger I, than the I'm bear. Someone where I'll, I'll just if I get too anxious, I'll go to my rooms. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabes que let's do the show porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I gotta go to that dry cleaner. I my kid Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I gotta go get some Neil Spore Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Do you know Gil? Do you know Gil's credentials? I just introduced myself For, to her. Uh, uh, formerly Gordo. Uh, <laughs> carrying the torch. Carrying the torch for Gordos everywhere. The night stalker. Whoa. This is so cool. So this is the way, th- this is the way that police work works. Okay. You have a lot of officers that are on the job. Maybe they're not entirely trained the right way you would agree yes across the maybe across the world even across i can say across the nation and then you have security guards the those with the iron on patch the wanna be flashlight that's all they got is what uh, they can only hit you with the light and then you have detectives who have credentials and are stars in in crime in the world of crime frank salerno caught uh-huh. The, the Night oh. Stalker, Cop, 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 the Hillside Strangler, yeah. was it part of Manson, and those guys, you, you were the, the first guy, I always say, he, he was the first person that was breaking it down to where he said, it's one person. And everybody said, it's got to be two guys, not one guy, it's, fucking two, it's two guys are doing this. And he said, it's, I'm telling you, it's one guy. And it was one guy. It was one guy. Wow. And then you get to the age of what? How old were you? Still pretty young. Yeah, I was. Well, shit, I was thirty-five. It was only about forty. I was only there. I got there at thirty-one, and it was five years after that. So I was only thirty-six years old when this happened. And when did they ask you to retire? I actually retired when I was sixty years old. Okay, still young. <laughs> and then you go home, and that's and there you are. Like you're you're important, and then you retire, and then you go home and. And the rest of your life, you're you're the, you're this person that's great at what you did, but then you're home. There's yeah. nothing. So the the oh. so the documentary came out, and then he came in here, and he was in here, and he was great. And we gave him. Now the fucking dude's all over crime con and all that <laughs> bullshit. He loves to talk. He wants to be a fucking mariachi and a former <laughs> fucking detective. So, Maya, will you interview? Will you introduce our guest? I'm I'm very oh excited to God. have you here. By the way, I <laughs> really am because Thanks. you know there's a lot of questions uh, that I I would like to ask you, and and I think that there are questions that in order to like I know a lot of people that have had careers as as standups or comedians and then have gone through the the machine of Saturday Night Live. And then I remember watching it when it first came on, like 50 years ago, maybe, if it's, if yeah, it's the anniversary. So uh, we're, so almost when they get a new class, if High School Musical had its shit together, it, we could be watching every yeah. every year of a High School Musical. I mean, but, Melissa, you were part of like the mass exodus almost of the cast. I think almost like oh, seven or seven, seven of you almost well, left. Well, before we almost. do that. Yeah, can you, can before. You, you introduce I say, I, oh, I yeah. give a little hint of a tidbit. <laughs> we have the incomparable Melissa Villasenor, comedian, <laughs> comedian a, if, impressionist, was, singer. Uh, if there was a comparable, who would it be? I don't know what comparable, what does that mean? Incomparable, incomparable. is like you beyond compare. comparison. Wow, that's very nice. <laughs> it, it's It's extremely nice. <laughs> I mean, and and and, um, and she's from uh, she's from your neck of the woods. That's Are right. You from Whittier That's too. Right. I'm from Pico Rivera. Oh yeah yeah um, yeah. Well, when I moved right. there, it was just Pico. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then it, they add the Rivera. Then then they added the Rivera. That didn't come till about fifty eight, fifty nine. Oh, interesting. 
Oh, it was just people. Where did the Rivera come from? Pico? Uh, a little the, pico? Was it that lady? Pico? Was it that lady that was talking shit about? Um, no. Oh, no, no. The lady that was the, that councilwoman? No, no. <laughs> hey, hey. But I'm happy. I'm happy. And now, because her sister, her sister was on the city council for San Fernando. When is that the one, Cindy? Yes. That's that is she was on the city council. We're gonna end up dubbing, we're gonna end up probably punching this word up, but they're like putitas, the two sisters. Well, you, if you want to call them putitas, they're putitas. I think they are. Yeah. The one who's talking about cogendo, the dude over yeah. there in San Fernando, uh, and this right. one right here, in Algonas. And that's the one that <laughs> you know smacked the uh, other councilman. That's the one that's when I got fired because I wouldn't sweep it under the carpet. Wow, well, they they said. Because they were going in a different direction. Bottom line, that's what it was. Came no, you. We'll get back to it. I feel like this is gonna be like uh, Melissa and I sharing a beer with our Theos or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, get back. Oh, you be can't like, shut the fuck up. Happy birthday. Like, oh, oh okay. Theo Gill and Theo Horn hanging. Don't you go to this. Going on with their tangents. Sing happy birthday. I'm gonna fucking throw that cat fucking cake in the street. Hey, uh, Melissa's gonna get pissed like, off. Okay. We don't okay. offer her a beer. Okay, Theo, take it easy. Take it easy. She doesn't drink beer. I drink beer every now and then. I had a Modelo the other day. Oh, there You're we go. And how was that? That was good. Was it good? <laughs> Did you put so anything good. in it? Any salt, any tajin or anything like that? Ice? I didn't. That Well, it was at the Dodgers game, so it was just in the... Have you been drunk? Have you ever been, like, shit-faced drunk? Um, a no, long think, time ago. I think you keep it together. I, I'm getting the I do keep that. it together. Well, now, getting older, I'm like, I can only have, like, two drinks, and then I'm, that's True. it. I really am not a big drinker, and then I, I could get... Yeah, I once don't the trust recovery me time myself. goes, I yeah. feel like just everything goes. Like you just don't do yeah. it, you know. Listen, if you can't recover, why? Then why? Because it's the pain of the 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 pleasure of of being drunk and laughing does not compare to the, the pain. hangover. It's true. It's the controlling of it, though. I think with age, you get to know. You know, one drink too much. You know, I can have a good time. I haven't and, learned that you know. yet. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll take one. Out. I would love to try one. Later, the okay. hibiscus one. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, I would Wait. love to try one. So there's a grapefruit and then. Later. Like a... She Late? said, later. Grapefruit and hibiscus. You don't, you don't want that. No, I'll try it, one. It, okay. it, it matches your hair. The, um, <laughs> um, w- w- what hospital were you born in? You know, I don't know, but it was in West Covina. In West Covina. Um, I don't remember the name of it. And then your parents. Well, I, I, were I'll from, ask. Were from, yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's it's such always like a good, California question. It's like what it's like. What hospital? Because, it's because you have to start somewhere. Covina Community Hospital. It was hospital. like a Saint something hospital. Saint there we go. Covina. Saint Memorial Covina. Hospital. Saint Covina. There it is. And <laughs> your parents are from Mexico. My yes, yes, yes. My mom's family is from Tijuana, and my dad is from my dad's. My grandpa's from Sonora, and then my grandma's from Aguascalientes. Yeah, I got a whole finding your roots. You did. Yeah. Like info. Now, who was an entertainment in your family? No one. Who sang in your family? Just my Theo Alfredo. He wanted to be a singer. He was like a, a mariachi singer. Oh. He sang oh, wow. really good. Because there has to be somebody like I know, it's but rare. no one else. That's it's, amazing. Some, did somebody want to and then didn't? Because you know the, it it mm. it's it's I don't know. it's such a it's such a a departure from what you grew up watching and grew up the people around you. I think yeah. right. Like, none of them were like, oh, my dad's going to go do this. I mean, but he was a musician. He played in a band. Uh, I wanted to play guitar. I play guitar every day, but I wasn't, I'm not good at it. My Maya was born. Her mom was an SMU, great actress and mm-hmm. very funny. And then, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever this is. I'm mean, just kidding. You know? But, but, but what fascinates me is it, it, it has to come from someplace either from neglect or it comes from to please somebody, you know, would you, you know, the whole, ne- <laughs> listen, neglect is a powerful, a powerful motivator. Yeah. And your dad, what did your, what did your father do? Your mom right. work? Yeah, they're still working. Oh, wow. My dad's a fence contractor. He puts up gates. Yeah. Um, and my mom does bookkeeping and she's my book accountant. <laughs> so she's like, on hey, to me. There we go. She's, hey, what, she's, is, what has she told you? Did, did not to buy anything? She's like, stop buying that junk. I buy a lot of cochinero. I like a little trinkets and toys. Yeah. Stop, stop my, buying my the junk. My chiquitiquis. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
Um, yeah, stop by. Like, what do you like? What do you like though? Like, I mean, are you like, the side of the road type? Oh, pull over! The, the, the. I mean, I like. I'm really attracted to like colorful like toys and stuff. Like, I don't know. Um, what did I buy? I mean, I just I'm remembering I bought an inflatable globe so I could learn about the planet and have fun. You know, P- punch it around with my friends. <laughs> And my mom's I mean, like, yeah. "Why are you How buying this?" How funny is that? She bought, hey, <laughs> she bought an inflatable globe so she could <laughs> learn about the world and then punch it around with her friends in the air. <laughs> That's amazing. Wherever it's you like can, wherever your like thumbs that. are. Venezuela, Zambia. <laughs> wherever your thumb, Ecuador. <laughs> I mean that's I mean that's a it's nerdy as fuck, but that's me. Yeah, it's I'm, awesome. That's I'm definitely amazing. a little weird. And then when you were growing up, like what cartoons were you watching? Like what where, where did you get your uh, entertainment? Man, I mean, we would watch a lot of Animaniacs. Um, I like they, they uh, were great. Animaniacs. Yeah, anyway, they, they never really yeah. got to really kind of explore. Yeah. They were like the regular. Like, yeah. Well, they were like a, a bunch of different characters, right? But they like, were like the wild, crazy versions of their bro- their cousins that were like the Warner Brothers ones. Like oh, Daffy Duck. Oh, they were yeah, smaller yeah, and yeah, crazier. Yeah, yeah. Almost like you had a family yeah. that showed up. You're like, oh, the fucking maniacos are here. And they're all <laughs> Maybe they were like the around. Latinos of the cartoon. They were, they yeah. never knew. They were little. <laughs> they were the... God, your cousin's little. That's my dad. How <laughs> <laughs> tall is he? <laughs> uh, um... Animaniacs was great too, right? Yeah. The way they that, talked and the, the things they did. And pinking the brain. Oh, that was part of them, yeah. right? And the pigeons and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, felt like we were always home, though. We were always watching like TGIF, that was Fridays, you know, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched a lot of Jim Carrey movies, though, growing up, too. Yeah. I think yeah. that was kind of my first taste of like, oh, I like how loony he is. Right. Yeah, same right. here, actually. Yeah. He, he showed me Ace Ventura, and I got hooked. I should have told when she was seven. I had it. That was way too early. Yeah, I. It was the, I think the, that was like me too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see when Nature Calls first or Pet Detective? First? Pet Detective Pet first. Okay. And I then the, I think which I was the good gradual. Slide and then in. when did you realize that you could you could do things you could do things like see something and then do it? Man, I was because at school, if you if you can do that in school, I mean that. Also, you're such a great impressionist. An impressionist, it takes. I was, know, not everyone can do that. Yeah, I was like listening to so much pop music at that time in seventh grade, and I had an ear for. I was like hearing Britney so much, just like oh baby, baby, you know mm-hmm. I'm a slave for you. <laughs> and then I would hear Christina. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, and then I would listen to Shakira and. Uh, but I was just, but I was like listening to them. I was also home a lot. You know, I couldn't go out a lot. I wasn't. I was just like, I would just get wrapped up in these singers. Then I started sharing them with my friends at school, and then I they were laughing. I was like, oh, I feel like I, I have something well, different. So, yeah. So you, you you had the ear, but were you are you dyslexic? I don't know. Do you process? Do you read or do you process more by auditory? Like I mm. I found out. I think mm. sometimes you find out that. To read it, you would never understand it. But a lot of us, maybe, if I would say to somebody, um, let me hear you say it, and then I would turn this way. Oh, yeah, like what kind of learner are you? And I would go, okay, uh, say it again? Okay. Oh. Well, I mean, I had trouble in school. Yeah. I couldn't r- comprehend they, I, reading, I, I and think, so mm-hmm. I, I'm a better visual learner. I think an audio, auditory, visually, is where you, you do the work in your head and someone who doesn't would look on the page and yeah. do it. But you're not going to learn how to do an impression by by looking at a video or a page. So you hear it, and you could be in another room mm-hmm. and go, oh, well, what, what is that? So, yeah, then it gets in your head, okay, yeah. and then you start to think, you start to deduct in your yes. head. I can, I think I can, yeah. Yeah, and I had a little, like, cassette recorder, you know, and I was just hearing going back and forth. I'm like, oh, I think that's it. I think and that's where did you get the cassette recorder? Did you go buy it? And hey, the, did I don't somebody know. have it around the house? Maybe someone had it around the house. Maybe she stole it. Yeah, you know, I used to have a cassette it. recorder. I think I, I think you have to. You have mm-hmm. to because you want to hear what it sounds like. Because yeah, that was before the phone. Imagine you your know. day when they used to interview a suspect and nobody. Were, I did it, and then nobody had a fucking recorder. Like, it, well, you, well, you, I didn't. You, I didn't you, say that. You, you did. When we did interview, you know, you sit there and say audio and visual. There are, during interviews, there are basically three kind of people: audio, visual, and kinesthetic. So you ask, uh, what's the uh, first thing you, what's the first thing come to your mind? What do you, when you think of your grandmother, 
And you would say, if I said, what, what first thing come to you when you think of your grandmother? The fake fruit in her place. Here you go. The fake fruit. <laughs> yeah, visual. <laughs> She's a vision. So you, oh, then you, oh, then I, then I know oh, oh, this is how me. I'm going to gear my questions. She's uh, a visual person. If she said, I could hear my grandma saying right now, hey, cabrona, get in here. She's an audio person. Uh, and if she says, oh, she was so loving, I can just feel hugging her. She's a kinesthetic. You know, she feels wow. it. So you, we, I gear part my of the question. Yeah, exactly. so interesting. And it doesn't feel like it would be a question that you go, I can't answer that. No. You say, oh, and then there yeah. you go. You, then you now you're being... That's really assessed. cool. So. Whoa. Yeah, so and what year are we talking about now? What year is this in your life? You're, you're, are you an only child? No, no, I'm middle. I have older brother, and then you have younger brother and sister. There are twins. And, and oh, wow, twins. There's a four, four of us. And did, did they aspire to be, was it in plays or athletic or anything? Um, they're all creative. So like my brother's like a creative designer for Spotify, and he worked at, yeah, he, like okay. he's just a good a tech guy. Yep. No. Uh, Allie now, my sister is, is studying acting in New York. She's cool. going to school. Yeah. And uh, Andrew's out here construction engineering. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. Good stock. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your parents are still married. How long have they been married now? Man, 38 years. Wow. That's incredible. I think so. I like funny. how he looks at me with that question. <laughs> they're a funny <laughs> duo. Yeah, they're probably, yeah, yeah they're probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my mom's so brutally honest and tough. My dad's just this little softy, you know? <laughs> He's goofy, and my mom will be like, Mike, you don't know that. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know. He's like, oh, yeah, and he's know. like, yeah. hey, wait, Loopy, let me just try to explain. <laughs> <laughs> like the other day, the other night, my dad and I were looking at the moon. You know, we're kind of the same little, we're a little aloof. Yeah. You know, we're like, ah, oh, why is it only half a moon? Is that the earth blo- or the sun blocking? And my mom's like, you guys don't know anything. No. And she was like explaining it. But dad and I were just like, oh, okay. Oh, I know. But- <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at the moon. Stupid! <laughs> oh, we're looking at the moon. You're not looking at it She's the right so way. She's so funny. Go across the street and look at it. Um, <laughs> the guy said one time that you know when the cordless phones came out that he said he told his mom, "Hey, mom, if you use the phone in their na- in their yard, they get charged for the call." <laughs> and he goes, "I come home from work and my mom's in the in their yard in the driveway." Oh, uh-huh, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> she believed. He, she believed that if you oh, went into man. the neighbor's yard, they if you used your phone, they would charge that account because it was a cordless oh. phone. <laughs> so yeah, so I I like that. And then and then, what did you did you go? What years? How, what year is this? You're, you're young. Is this in the nineties? This is the nineties. So. Yeah. Um. In two thousands. Damn. Yeah, so I when I graduated from high school, I started doing open mics immediately. Wow! I but where was, the where? I didn't ever. Did we, wow. Who did you? And I went to the Ice House first, and then like the uh, the annex room. There was that a guy that room, yeah. yeah that yeah. ranch was there, and then uh, someone from there was like, "Hey, come do my bringer show at the comedy store." The bringer shows I got caught up in, you know, the beginning years. So um, did you like the comedy? Did you like the comedy store? Oh yeah, so then, so then I started doing open mics at the comedy store, and that was the club that really brought me in. And Mitzi passed me for the belly room, and oh, wow. and so I was, uh, that's where I was getting the stage time too. Like they were like, you could work out here weekly mm-hmm. and get better. You and know? at that point, how long were you doing it? You're probably not oh, doing it. Oh my god, very, just very long. a couple. So you years. were pretty good, pretty fast. I think there was that thing of like me being a rare thing with the impressions and everything they didn't have that no one there wasn't around in the comedy club so i think it was for them it was like a special thing to have so it was it was really nice but i wasn't funny i was i was okay yeah (laughs) but you but you your your impressions though but you didn't know what were writing jokes i was i felt like the beginning was just like here's this celebrity voice here's this you know kind of bits for and the did impressions you gla- did you put glasses on or did no, you just do them as no, you no i just was them as, as as me but then through time eventually i started making mm-hmm. fun of myself mm-hmm. and talking about my family and yeah. and integrate like having both you know right because it was good yeah. you did barbara walters you did something with your hair you oh, put it oh that was that, an early thing too that yeah. america's got talent like i just yeah. well that you was like 90 finalist. seconds you, were you know they're like got steam talent. through okay so let's, let's talk about america's got talent now, now you you were probably watching the show right and well, then and then that somebody said to you oh or you thought because listen yeah you have to have fucking balls to go on America that's got talent. Oh. I mean, I can't, I could not do it. Either that or no like brain. Some of these you have up guys, there? you know, like the Chinese guy that went up there and 
did the dance, you know, yeah. and he's still still famous today. And some of those people, they just put on there, but I think, just for joking. But the, most mean, of the people. I didn't want to do it. Really? Someone, I did this show, and this lady was like, hey, I'm helping set up auditions, and you want to, you should do it. And I was oh, like. So you got scouted. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was so too nervous. So there was nervous. somebody there in the audience watching. Yeah, and I was like, I I'll do it, but I'm not going to try hard. And then they were like, great, congrats, you're going to fly to Seattle. <laughs> no! Oh, my, oh my <laughs> God. I just, how far I you went. What, what did you do? I did um, Barbara Walters, Natalie Portman. Uh, Miley. S- Miley. Mm-hmm. Christina Aguilera, Kathy mm-hmm. Griffin. Oh, let's see. Can you, can they you were do good. that? Will you do something? You were good. I mean, this was my Natalie Portman. Wow, it's so amazing to be here. I can't, I can't believe this is crazy. <laughs> this is so. This is amazing. Uh, and uh, I like that. That's. What, look at I mean, right. Barbara oh, Walters. I was just copying. Um, sure, it's Harry's Barbara Walters. Mm. So just this is Barbara Walters. You know. Look at that. It's not much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have Barbara Walters talking yeah. dirty. She'll leave your message. <laughs> <laughs> What are you wearing? This stuff, I'm t- I watch so yeah. many of them. It, it's uh, fascinating. Thanks. You, and and uh, um, uh, Miley Cyrus? Hey, this is Miley Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so... I'm just saying their names. I, but, I, I was like... Because I don't, no, I don't remember the bits. changes like, you know... That's true, yeah. That, that like, all of a sudden, we yeah. go to yeah. Santa Anita. <laughs> no, it's like, it's so great that you're part of like... <laughs> It's a little bit of a high silver face. Oh, you know, bit. my kids, did, my kids didn't know... Who the guest was going to be today? You know, I I, I didn't see him, so I didn't tell him. I did tell my wife, and my wife was excited that she was going to be down yeah. here today. Oh, that you're you're, you're so a talented sweet. person. Everything that Mayan oh, said I about mean. you in the beginning, very true. And, and, and were you and you flew up? Did anybody go with you? No. You know, because I because I know what it's like to go. Uh, I like to dig into the. When you got there, you had to take a cab. You had to go to the thing. You your next day you went like you got ready. You know what I mean? It, it's yeah, I think when, yourself, I, when I'm so under pressure heavy. like that, I yeah. like being alone. Yeah. Yeah. Because course, if yeah. someone's in my head, oh my God, I would be like, you yeah. get away. Yeah. Yeah. Get away from me. Yeah. Oh, if, someone, if someone said, is this what you're doing? Oh my God. Oh my, yeah. Oh, I immediately yeah, it, shut have down. Yeah. I get really, defa- I get almost like violent. Yeah, I, me too. Yes. It's, violent. it's like, get away from, it's like, you know, yeah, trying to protect get real yourself. Serious. And, then, and then you went Process. up there and then you, you was it in a theater? Yeah, it was some big theater in Seattle. Like the um, Paramount? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And then you went up, wow. And then you went? Well, that was so funny because Nick Cannon was like emceeing it and he was like, I didn't hear him, but when I walked on stage, he tells the camera, let's hope she doesn't suck. And yeah. oh, and I'm, thank goodness I didn't hear that. Oh, I, <laughs> oh thank God you didn't. But, uh, With his fucking turban on? I, yeah. No, no, he didn't have his turban on. But I ended up, it ended up being really great. I was, I, I didn't know what to expect because I was, I, was, I knew that show, people could look really stupid. Right. And yeah. I was like, I don't know about this, but it ended up being pretty But you nice. had a lane, though. I mean. Yeah, that was what was cool. It was like, oh, there's no one else here like no, that no. was doing what I was doing. So and, was, imme- so cool. and the thing is, you know, with impression, it's like when you do yours immediately, even when your face changes, you know who it is. Exactly. So there's not like, oh, yeah. I mean, so you, you get to it. Yeah. But also on your YouTube channel, you did such a great thing where you would have the day planner of like Owen Wilson oh, or you do yeah, Kristen yeah, Wig yeah. days. Oh. And you would do the whole day. You would do make oh, vi- oh. You would make videos. I did these oh. like web se- I did these like web series with Masume Horb, Fred Fred Armisen and Horatio Sansi like made a channel for Latino comics on mm-hmm. Broadway video. But a while back, before SNL, I did like a few epi- web series where I would have a celebrity. I bit play a celebrity at their desk, oh, planning wow. their, pl- their 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 day on their planner. Oh, so it's like smart. Owen's like, yeah, 8 a.m. Sing sing with the bird outside my window. Yeah, he's a really nice bird. <laughs> and I would plan out the schedule, you know. And then I had Gwen Stefani, and I had Kristen <laughs> Wiig. It's like. I'm gonna have a cup of tea, you know. So just like, little, <laughs> <laughs> so it was like I had. You, it was a cute little like. Didn't you series. do one with J Lo? Oh yeah, yeah, I did a J Lo one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a J Lo one. She's like. I'm gonna. I don't know. I'm gonna dance. <laughs> I don't remember though. Yes. I have to like contain myself because I could probably quote just things you said on SNL, like yeah. for sure. Like, 
They're already uh, coming. Fucking like, nerds unite. I am such <laughs> a, I'm a nerd for but, her. Uh, uh, that's not offensive to nerds, is it? No, no, I love it. <laughs> no, I love let, it. let the freak flag fly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, it's like before, but I think, you know. People are afraid of what they don't know. It's it's funny, though. All the people that were that were little mencitos, you know, little loquitos, they, oh, they, yeah. all, they all got their shit together. Oh, yeah. And all the guys that walked into class with a girl out there are, you know, all gordos, you know, out there looking at the garbage, barefooted. Hey, mm-hmm. that dude. Uh, so there is a, a, a way of... Uh, the way people age. It's almost like uh, when they go, this one's here, and then like those horse races that you play, and then when you shoot water in them, and yeah. the horse moves, and then you think that one's gonna win, and then the other ones, it's, it's like a, the, 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 the time it takes someone to grow into, because they're inside, they're smart, then they grow into their confidence, and then they find their thing, and then yeah. it's just easy to them. Yeah. When you did That's that AGT, cool. the first one, Howie Mandel was beside himself. I mean, you had him from the very beginning when you came out with Barbara Wawa. You know, I she know. he was in, you know, know. comedian. I'm saying, oh, she's got it. And did anybody go <laughs> over with you and to say, or you put your, you put it together the way you wanted it to, right? Like you I said, think this people is where were I'm trying to start. get in my head of like what to do, and then I kind of silenced and I was like, I'm just going to do what I think is best because mm. in the end, that's I'm well, the only one. Y- yeah, right. you know. So it ended up being okay. <laughs> no, that's I know. So great. She advanced. And how did you feel during all that? Once you get that first laugh, then you're kind of like, all right, I got to wow. have some fun. Yeah, yeah, you yeah know. man. But I was nervous leading up to it, for sure. It, is it takes balls. Nerves. I mean, it really does take balls. You know that. I know. When you're out there and you just the whole fucking United States, the fucking world is watching. Like, it's I know, but that was a thing. Show. That's a big show. It's a huge, huge. show. I don't know. And then what I mean, came? It still has of, millions and millions of views oh, yeah. on and, YouTube. And then, still. And then what came of like? What did, when did you start to see? Like when you went out, people started to recognize you. Yeah, I felt like. I mean, after that appearance, I was able to go on the road. You know, that was which was bittersweet because I only had a couple of years of stand up in me, so right. I was bombing. Mm. Oh really? Oh, crying all over the U.S. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And people were coming no, to see because, you? Yeah, because it's like, oh, here's a girl that she was on AGT. Yeah, that was 90 seconds. But then you I have hour. to do a half hour, then an uh, hour. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. That's, that's, that's a huge hard. jump. So for impressions. So my feature act was killing, and then I would go up and just bomb. Fuck. Wow. It was hard. But it's, it's and you know what? It made me tough, I guess. It does make you tough. But man, those those nights were like, Im- I don't want to be near me. Because Im- mm-hmm. I, yeah, I don't want to be near a, me. Because impressions, like you could, it's not like you could do two songs of a, of an impression of and right. Yeah. Unless you take a spin on it, or you have to make it your own. But yeah. even well, for forty five, like, what was know, it? Forty five minutes. Too, for on or it's like, that's but not for forty five. Nah, that's a, that's why I had a. That's what forced me, which was great. That's what forced me to start writing about myself. Yep. Because yes. I was like, I don't want to be doing an hour of only about celebrities. Right. Ew. <laughs> yeah, no. It would make me sad inside. I'm like, no, I'm mm. Melissa. I got right. I got a lot of things to make talk about. Sad. That's right. You know, that's that's right. Sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that was like after for a few years after America's Got Talent going on the road and Did you did you mm-hmm. admire what what fem- what comedians did you admire? Growing up, I I mean when I started watching stand-ups, I felt like Wanda Sykes <sighs> was one of my favorites. Uh Hmm. Man. Wanda Sykes, because, you know, she Wanda does a great impression yeah. of Wanda Sykes, oh. too. Oh, my God, that's right. Well, yeah. How did I do my Wanda? It's been You're so like, where long. is Wanda? Let me where find her. <laughs> like, let me find her. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and then the eyes. I mean, it's that's also because, like, the eyes. voice together. Yeah, yeah. The fucking eyes. <laughs> Oh, you just need to have Gil carry around. Oh, well, you know, I know, I know. Like, this is not going to be you another salary every time. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was like, the ship's I coming want, in. Come on. I want just yeah, like a little slap, a little laugh board or I something. Would, I need Gil. No, it's like, like, yeah. After the third laugh, you'd be Gil. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 one time, one time on, yeah. on New Year's Eve, the first comedian goes up. I've been working in Addison at the Improv, mm. and you hear. 
And my, I go in the office. I said, did you hand out those fucking party favors, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I go, is that, and you come for the They're not gonna, people, people aren't gonna use them until midnight. <laughs> every time, every time the dude told a joke, the whole audience. <laughs> so the first guy goes up, second guy goes up. I go up and I go, hey, whatever. <laughs> Do my five minutes. I said, listen, if you blow that fucking <laughs> horn again. <laughs> I'm gonna jump off the stage. I'm gonna take that fucking horn yeah. and I'm gonna shove it up your fucking ass. And it's all quiet. And the dude in the front goes. Which <laughs> 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 was it you. even better? Oh my god! I thought for some reason it was good. But everybody's all quiet. I'll scare that one guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which, I would. I would. I love that one. Huh? Silence. Yeah. Quite <laughs> frankly, that's a great button. Man, <laughs> it's a sad horn. <laughs> like I'm not. And then I, then I don't work on Halloween's because I had a fucking vampire heckling me. In the oh, front row, I said, "Hey, no. I'll put you in that fucking coffin early, motherfucker." Uh, he had like the dry blood right here and shit, uh, he's fucking heckling me. Oh. <laughs> but you know, isn't it out there? It's like when no one's watching and there's no cameras, nobody gives a fuck. All you have to do is not be late, because mm. the only the only time they care about you is when you're late. So when you do a show, you have 23 hours to your to yourself, and the only thing that they care about is the next day. Don't be late. And now you have the whole day to figure out what to do mm. in Utah or wherever. But you know, when you when you decide to write, like your moment was, you're like, shit, I gotta figure out how to fill this time. And then you're out there and it forces you to, to dig and to find yeah. things to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not easy. Mm-mm. Like, would you say, like, when you get scouted for the SNL process, like, when after AGT, like, one, like, how far from that did you get at, scouted for SNL? Or do you think when they try to find you for SNL, how important do you think it is of, oh, this is someone that can encompass everything that we need for the show? Or how much do you think individuality runs into it? Or do you need to be kind of be a chameleon and kind of be, or is it a little bit of trying that's to find the That's nine questions. Man, I was just going to say that's a bunch of stuff. Which one do you want to answer? That's the like, second part of SNL, of like when you get, because you're an impressionist, but you're such a unique individual. It's like with the uh, with the casting process of it, or you being found to be an aud- be auditioning, like do you, they, do you think they, what helped you was your individuality and you being yourself? I think yourself, so, because or, I audition. Man, I don't know. It was before the year before AGT or something. And oh, I did really? impressions. Like I was like 21 when I first auditioned, Ooh. and I did okay because I had good impressions. But I wasn't a person yet. Right. You know, I didn't know who I was, so I didn't get it. And then you know, years went by, more life and more. <laughs> where did you, you know? Where did you audition at? Um, I went. I flew out there. I, oh, wow. I submitted so a tape. Yeah, I went oh, to wow. the stage. And they saw the tape and all that. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then I re-auditioned. Well, they, they actually, Al Madrigal, he had me in a showcase. And, really? And one of the producers from SNL was there. This was mm. 2016. And uh, I just feel like my stand-up set. 2016. Was, that's, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I got the, the show then. But I mm-hmm. flew out again. And when they, they called you, your agent called you? Or? Yeah, yeah. They were like, they want you to fly out and Fuck. audition again. Wow. And I was like, wow, seven years later. Pretty cool. It's incredible. <laughs> But and then you went in addition again, and, and then they said. Then I had more meetings with the writers and and Lauren, and then then I flew back home, and they're like, "You got this." But show. you but you didn't think of it like they don't have any. You're the first Latino person. I didn't even think of yeah, that. Yeah, no, no. Truly, I, 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 was, yeah. I was just like, "This was my kid dream," you know. That's the shit that I I, I thought about because yeah. I mean, look at me. I'm gonna, <laughs> what am I <gonna> say? <laughs> I'm the first indigenous person yeah. to ever. <laughs> but but I mean, you know, when you look at, you have to. I feel. Yeah. I mean, you just you just did. It wasn't an, time had changed too. Times were you know, you you didn't you were an impressionist. You had your abilities and yeah, and I felt more, you know, more of who what I was yeah. like, more of myself. And and like, and, and, of... and everything that you had gone, everything that you had done, even in the clubs and all that stuff, prepared you for that, right? I mean, yes. yeah, that's what happened. That's what I realized ah. when I was auditioning and everything. I was like. Thank God for those hard shows. Thank goodness mm. for all those, all those shows that I thought didn't even matter. They all they added all up mattered. and really mattered. Right. Yeah, you yeah, should thank yeah. the mistakes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good one. I, th- yeah. I think that people, when they if they eat it, you know, they get depressed. But it's a lesson. 
yeah. it's not a mm-hmm. negative. It's a positive because everybody's going to eat it. Mm-hmm. But if you do and then you decide to fight back and not be the person that's just eating it, like, you know, just, this guy's going to eat it, you know, and then you start to just to create a space for yourself, which you did, and you had a lane. I mean, it was it's incredible. I mean, mm-hmm. look at I mean, over here, this yeah, is I overate. Field yeah. of work, incredible field of work. <laughs> yeah, and and then and then you had to move out there. Wow, that's I know, okay. and I'm from here, so that was a that was another thing, wow. another layer. That city. What did you? Ooh. Yeah. What did you? What did you start to see? Like, what did you see? Where did you? Where did you? You rent an apartment in the? Yeah, in the city. They helped I you. No, the show yeah. helped you. Yeah. Well, I mean, my sister was already out there, which was oh, a great, great blessing. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Think I wouldn't have hacked it. Wow. But she helped me like find, I was like a broker, I guess, mm-hmm. to look for a place. Um, and the studio apartment faced, the one window I had faced an, a wall. And I was in the darkness whenever wow. I was home. So it was like, that, what a city. How did right. they do wow. it? How did they do that? Uh-uh. <laughs> because you're fro- because from we're here, from so here, I'm like yeah. a sunshine baby. We're from here, <laughs> and none of our windows face a fucking wall ever. Really, I mean, yeah. And sun, not weather, not cold, and not impersonal. Where I remember when I went, I said, "Hey man, you know what time it is?" And it's fucking, it's like, it's a fucking motherfucker. <laughs> like, you're t- mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we don't talk to each other here. Like just everybody walking down the street, nobody talking yeah. to each other. They're just everybody's got a place to go. But then I, the, so that was the first season. But then the then following year, I moved out to Brooklyn, which was oh great. lower buildings. And my sister was there, so I lived right around the corner from her. Um, cause she's a great cook. You know, I go over and eat yeah, yeah, food. sure, of course. Yeah, my her and my brother in law, I just. Just refuel. Just refueling. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was what was fun. And, uh, yeah, and then by that, time, by that time, when in the city, you, you started to go out, and people started to come up to you. and uh, I feel like a few years after. Uh, I, I don't think really? immediately. No, no, no. Yeah. I think after I had some good things that, to share on the show. Right. You know, some things mm-hmm. that I like. Oh, yeah. And then the week is the week as hard as they as they say it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's almost it, it's almost inhumane, right? Yeah, it's a wow. roller coaster. If yeah, the whole week is they get together and then they start to figure out what yeah, ideas they like start writing to nights on peel like, off Tuesdays things. And... Yeah, <sighs> your heart's just broken. But I mean, yeah. it's also but it, it's magical too when you get something you really put your heart in and it gets to air. You're like, it's it's a magical feeling. Yeah. So. It's it's good. It's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, is is it like um, trying to uh, uh, please a parent? That's a parent that's like a, that's um, tough on you, and you bring something. Oh, this is great. Like Lauren, uh, try, <laughs> like, try again. Lauren. Yeah, yeah. No, I felt like it for me. The struggle was the amount of people and the amount of talent, yeah. and you don't know where. I, I think I felt. Like me in high school, where I'm like, I don't know where I belong. Who do I? Who gets me here? Who understands yeah. me? You're kind of um, trying to find yeah. Yeah. where you fit, and and I tend to I think when I'm around like big groups and you know people that are have more power or confidence, I tend to get small and yeah. quiet because mm-hmm. I don't I don't like yelling. I, I don't know how to explain Fuck. it, but no, I no, have, no. you don't want to have to get bigger I, than the I'm bear. Someone where I'll, I'll just if I get too anxious i'll go to my room so i wow. would do that sometimes in my office and i, I didn't know how to mm-hmm. dive in with the amount of people sure of i don't know how to explain it but you're introverted no, introvert that's what it is but also i mean there's that the amount of i mean the amount of i mean imagine being in a room full of generals yeah you know, it's what like general has right, the i'm gonna say, get lost exactly. in the noise so why right? may you know wait yeah. for my time be strategic I if everybody's important who's more important I understand. And then you just, I mean, I think anybody would, would, would go that way. I mean. Yeah. But then I found, found good pals, you know, that, that wrote from like wrote with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend, Steven Castillo helped me write a few fun sketches and like, uh, we made one of my stand up bits, a sketch. It was called dying Miss Gomez. It's just me as an old lady. One of my stand-up bits where I, I just <laughs> sing Nickelback as a final words in my deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so that was a really fun sketch to do. And I was like, man, but, that but, came from me. That was But good. it's fucking obscure. Like it, yeah, like, it's weird. It's way fucking obscure. Oh, and not great. anything that 
anyone would expect. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the obscurity moves you closer to the front of the line, right? I never <laughs> right. made it as a wise man. <laughs> like, yeah. So great. Shit. Yeah. And so then through time, I mean, certain writers, I was like, oh, they'll, they're good at writing something like this. And they want to get they're it. They're good at uh, so, That person's great at writing something that's a celebrity impression, you know? Yeah. So then it's, wow, then you figure right. out. You start to, yeah. Who right. has, who has. It's almost like a boxer with corner people. Like, you got mm. the guy that has the thing. You got the guy that has the what? Well, like, and all together, they find you things that yeah. you would you would like. Okay, I'll do that because yeah. it's really them telling the boxer, "Hey, to do this." You know, they're watching. Do this, right? And everybody has their own specific uh, uh, conductor of an orchestra. Yes, give me this, give me this, and here's the finished product right That's there. That's it. Where were you? Where were you when? What got on first? And where were you when you did you watch it? And when it oh my, I guess when wait when I it was first... live. The first year, well, yeah, that um, it would go on YouTube like clips yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. But after, but uh, the first year was super hard. But thank goodness, Mikey Day and Streeter, um, they Streeter's a writer and mm-hmm. Mikey's on the cast, but he yes. writes so many brilliant pieces. They wrote the Dirty Talk sketch for me yep. and uh, Aziz. So I'm I'm bad at dirty talking, you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I and showed, then, I that, that, that was one. like the first thing yeah. that was. Out there, and tell I, Gil, and tell the, Gil. Uh, oh. It was just like, yeah, it was a sketch where I'm. They're in bed. I keep, yeah, it was like a talk. He's like, talk dirty to me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're a raging alcoholic. And it's just like mean. It, um, yeah, he's like role play. I'm like, yeah, pretend you're. Yeah, hey girl. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little girl. I'm six. <laughs> like, something like that, right? Yeah. No. I was like, no. Yeah, I don't know. I'm bad at school. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it's like I'm tutoring. It's like I have a math disability. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm a, like yeah, I have a learning just, disability. And you're like, no, no, like a sexier problem, a sexier problem to have. It's <laughs> like, dear oh. God. It's crazy because it goes all oh, about this and it keeps doing it. Oh my God. See, it was the best because they were like, oh, let's do role playing and it was like oh okay it was like and then Aziz was Australian and he was like oh you want to play with my diddery do and you were oh I'm a dork I'm a dork I'm an SNL dork she said even before way before she way before Aziz is a funny man himself oh my god so good yeah so that was like that that was the first season but yeah it's I did grow each year though and yeah yeah and and, 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 so cool and when you're not there, is it in your head the whole time? Is it in your, like, thinking of things if you went out and, and things? Is it, like, that? Like, in my body still, like, to yeah. thinking of like like I, like, I play in a lot of those uh, golf tournaments with the pros, and, you know, we weren't pros, but the pros would just, it just be about, their heads would just be about that the whole time. It's not, you know, it's hard to disconnect. Yeah, I don't think, nowadays, now that I'm not on the show, I'm, I'm not thinking of sketches anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I but think for now, to for leave is a, it's a big, yeah, it's a big, it's a big thing. I felt like it was, yeah, I just, yeah. How are you feeling? Even just after that's such a huge part of your life. I know it's a little is, still strange right now yeah. too. Like my body's like used to that schedule and right. rhythm and, and I don't know. It is. I'm still going through a little. Now right? you're back out here, back, back on the home. West coast. Yeah. Get to rest. I know. You know, recalibrate. Get to rest and hang out. Uh, do you go perform? Do you go? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to the Comedy Store Improv and any other Laugh Factory. Mm. Uh-huh. So, but it feels good. I think now my brain is just thinking of silly thoughts, any ideas for stand up, and that's where I'm at right now. And I draw, I do art. Yeah. And what do you? And what do you want to do? What do you think you want to do? <sighs> Don't say Pro- direct. No, probably acting, but I also was thinking of a, a, my own kind of variety show, like a Pee Wee Herman type thing. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why. Amazing. I'm like, man, that'd be fun. If it's Is in it, your head, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you definitely could. <laughs> you could do a good Pee Wee Herman impression with yeah. that voice. I know you could. No, I, I was just like <laughs> thinking, I don't know. I really don't know yet. I think I kind of want to live and travel and stuff so I could see what I want to do next. Yeah. I feel like there is a little bit of pressure on me to like... Oh, while people are still thinking of you, get a show. I'm like, but I don't. But you know what I was telling Well, tell- you're going to have a gig Maya. on Lopez versus Lopez. I was telling Maya that. I said, I wonder, I wonder what she wants to. Uh, I wonder what she wants to do. I was do. like, we would want to write something for you on our show. Ah, you know, that'd be just, cool. But I, yeah, I think I'm just, I just want to write and live and see what I, I don't want to force stuff too. 
Yeah, you're not you know? in the club. You're not. You don't feel like you have to go to the clubs or. Well, no, no. At, like comedy clubs, I always do. I you love. Do? Yeah. I love being on stage. But I, in terms of like creating a show or a movie, I'm like I don't. I don't know. Yet, what no. ah. that is yet. You've earned the time to wait for that. Yeah. Out. Yeah. It's like let me breathe a little. Mm-hmm. When you when you step when you step <laughs> away like, when you step yeah, away please. when you step away because, I mean, it's very anti-Latino to leave a gig. When you don't get fired or they catch you okay. stealing. That's what was real hard for my mom. I mean, mom. serious. Really? My mom was like, I mean, really? Don't don't people stay, if, if they get a gig, like the people I grew up around, if they if they worked, they worked until either the factory left or they they never left a good, like what can be considered. Yeah. Good your, and your mom said that to you? Yeah. She had a tough time kind of, she didn't, didn't understand. But I, but I know she, she was like, I know it's hard, but. It's a steady, you know. Yeah. I, but I get yeah, it for them. The and then I think of them. For your yeah, child, but I also right? think of like my parents when the four of us when we were kids. I'm sure right. it was like that was. Yeah, you don't let go of something, but in this case, I was also worried about just my mental health a bit. I had some mm. panic attacks at work last season, and I was like, mm. I don't. I'm having too much. This is too hard for me. Wow, fuck. Oh, just the, the pressure, and I was like, I don't think I want to keep. And keep that's, myself I there understand. in that place. You know the one the, you know? the one thing that uh, I think hasn't changed about Saturday Night Live is if you look at you know baseball or any sport where there's a high is the amount of pressure that a performer goes through. Oh. I think the thing that has not changed is that they pressure. still they still have the same structure that started from Belushi and and, and same all structure. those and, and the and the the intensity of that week and as you get. Things get cut. People get you know things get trimmed. You're not in this, hey, this and that. And it's it's there's no sure footing on that show. Mm-hmm. So you go through the season. You go through another season. You go through, and all of a sudden, it's just it's so much. Yeah, it's a and, lot. And every week, I felt like I was. I have to explain. Like I felt like I was on the edge of a cliff, hanging on. Yeah. Like wow, for yeah. like, is it, I don't know. I see, and you, you people on the inside see it. The viewer who doesn't no, know anything cool. about the business. You know, we don't we don't see that. We just see what comes out. We don't see the the work, the labor, yeah. the stress, yeah. the intensity of it all. And you'd never had a, a, a panic attack before? Not until then, no. There was one Lucky. one table it was like a I know. <laughs> I, I was didn't, like, that's crazy. I mean I've had stress there where I've had back spasms. That's where I uh, oh, attacks yeah. me. manifested itself in a yeah, different way. Man. Wow, fascinating. And I'm and I'm walking around the studio like this, but when I had to get on air I had to oh, hold it. <laughs> really? <laughs> there was a few times that happened. But uh And yeah. your back spasms just because of all the amount of I mean I used to hear I that like Bill Hader is, would right? have like intense panic attacks like before he went on. And then, like, he would just turn, go on and be like, okay, sometimes. Like, there was just... a sketch this past season where I kept messing up my lines. I hadn't been in an episode for a few weeks. So I got nervous out there. Yeah. And I, I got frightened, and, and I messed up a line, and I messed up an, another line. And there was a sketch I had to exit with a dog, and I start crying on the Ooh. side because I'm like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Oh, and then I had to go back out in the scene. So my face was like watery and I was just like fuck that, that was just like I was so mad at myself but I was like I can't it's okay it's yeah. just but you know it's wow. okay. was it uh, it was more than I'm you I'm just also sensitive and I yeah. I think I'm not a, a I am as too. tough of a fighter too as I mm. I don't know in moments I think I it's own it's strength. all in it's brave it's bra- being brave too yeah being... but when you don't listen I mean there's, there's not many there's not many jobs in this business where you can't go to someone and say, what's it like? You know, we're going on the road or going, like I went from going to clubs to like a theater, then you go to a theater and then you go to a bigger theater and then you go to an arena. Then you decide to do it in the round because you can sell more tickets and then you start doing them in the round and they're like, how do you stand out there in front of 18,000 people in the round? But it's not like, it doesn't go from like zero to 18,000 people. It goes from like 2,500, 5,000, seven. And, and it's, not, <laughs> and um, it's not, it's not a thing that, you open a door and you go, "What the fuck?" Hmm. It 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 goes gradual, so there's a way, there's an adjustment part of it. But in in Saturday Night Live, there's there, it's almost like he was in Vietnam. There's no way that unless you've been to war that you're going to be able to describe to somebody, and they're going to have them understand what it's like to to or be under those conditions. And I think all of that is such a shock to a person 
But you can't say to somebody, "Is this fucking shit scare the fuck out of you too?" Yeah, they'd be like, "No." Even if they, even if it was yes, they would say no, because you you can't. There's nothing you can confide in that way. Cause, yeah, because nobody wants to hear that. Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. It's it's. Can't yeah, and then you go home you and you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad. <laughs> it, it, it really is sad to me. <laughs> not, not being sad, not like, being no, funny. I'm not being funny. 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 Not being funny my growth on this show everything okay. unraveled at the right time yeah. like everything that aired that i wanted to like it it found the right time i was strong in those moments when it aired you know so yes. i think it's it all works out yeah no yeah you no, know? No. the no, price you pay for <clears throat> celebrity for fame no. for show showcase your work it takes a toll. yeah did uh, did uh, latino organizations come after you no because no. I, I think, yeah, as a, you're a performer. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. times they'll say, oh, the first Latina um, person on Saturday Night Live, but. Oh, I don't. No, I don't no. think anyone. Uh, like no, I mean, sometimes like sometimes that. groups will say, oh, you know, we'll give you this award or oh. we'll. In a do positive this. way. No, no be. awards. <laughs> 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 You're like no. I mean, like you probably. I mean, sure. You you have awards, right? Uh, yeah. I'm sure he's got. I mean, we've gotten honored lately yeah. yet from like the nat from the National Hispanic Media Coalition. Like our show hasn't even aired yet. You know, it's just being. That's great. When they give you, I mean, my I mean, my and my and you know has been watching Saturday Night Live forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, forever. Forever. So. And, like your presence on the show meant, I'm not trying, like so much to me because I was, you know, I went to Second City Camp and I studied, com- and I went to college studying comedy writing and you came the first year, my first year of college studying comedy. Whoa. And I, you know, I didn't see myself until I saw you and on the same track that I wanted to go on. And it just gave me such a fire to be like, I'm going to just hit it on because because she did it yes. now wow i can do it too Whoa. and yeah i went to the conservatory and everything so mine got into incredible. second city and people say wow she was george lopez daughter i didn't yeah i actually left college because there's a no, lot of people were you there's know. no fucking pull i can't pull a second i mean there's no listen you know that this is this <laughs> isn't a business where you go hey my daughter wants to be in second city yeah bring her over i tell her ask for jeremy oh okay hey i might go with her <laughs> so she got in on her own i wouldn't like, I didn't have the balls to do that, you know. I think, hopefully Arsenio doesn't mind me saying this. So, Arsenio Hall auditioned at Second City and got in. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't a sketch type of person, still wasn't. But but he did his thing, he got in. And at that same time, I think he got offered an opportunity to go open for maybe Gladys Knight on the road. And Whoa. he said, do I do... Stand up, which I'm more comfortable in, but also on a on a fluke, I got accepted into Second City, and he took mm-hmm. he he because he knew that Second City was going to be tough. He's like, "Fuck that! I, I know that's going to be tough, so I'm going to take doing stand up." And he opened for like Gladys Knight and Luther Vandross and and people on the road. But I said, "Do you regret it?" He goes, "No, not really, because that I auditioned, but I knew that that." was going to be difficult mm. because of the I, amount of characters and the things that, mm-hmm. and, and the audience that wasn't expecting stand-up. You had to give them, you know, characters and do improv and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my and my See, I went uh, to sketch because awesome. I was afraid of stand-up. And then I was like, oh, if I want I need, but you need to, you know, do stand-up because it helps, you know, create your persona and create your person and to go on there. And now, well, you know, I told I'm Mayan, on NBC now, so yeah. it's... Yeah, I told Mayan way, not to do but, stand-up because I felt like... I was good at it, but I did in Chicago. I was afraid to do it here. It's almost like if if I if I getting compared to him, it was just a lot of pressure. If somebody found out that I posed nude when I was young, you don't want your kid to be. You're like, listen, I didn't pose nude so that you could be out there and have. Yeah, to do you the told same me thing. not to. You're like, I told her look, not to. You're like, like, look, I know what it's like to be in those clubs. I didn't work in the clubs to do that. so that my kid would have to work in the clubs. I would hope. So she made, but she made her own decisions too. Mm-hmm. 
Fuck your dad. <laughs> yeah, I did it on TikTok. <laughs> and that's where, that's where I did it. Fuck. Yeah, so... Yeah. So mine would watch Saturday Night Live, YouTube, watch you do the stuff. religiously. And then TikTok comes out, and then Debbie Wolf, who created, you know, Lopez versus Lopez, saw Mayan, like, retort to a... Yeah, to so a, someone made a, a TikTok of um, my dad waking up from surgery and being like, oh, George Lopez has got a kidney, and then he cheats on his wife, and... You know, takes the you know and divorces her, and then I duetted it, and I was like, "Well, that's not true," and I was like, "You know what? What will get people's attention?" I'm like, "You know what? I'm in a quarantine. Who's gonna watch it? I'm gonna twerk upside down on a wall because I think it's something catchy and it'll catch people's attention." And you know, I'm whatever. And so I did it with. I was like, "No, she divorced him. We get much. She gets money and alimony. You know, da 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 da." And all true, by the way. All true. It was yeah. like, uh, and not just no dollars. fake news here. And um, no, and then I saw so I posted it, not you know meaning anything. My mom actually didn't want me to post it. <laughs> what are you doing, fool? What are you <laughs> doing? Like, you know, some people are listening to this, <laughs> too. So I don't even know. I'm just as lost no, as No, 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 you're right. So, and, so, <laughs> so she saw that, and then... Um, and that's how we, the show got started. Like, Debbie Wolf, our showrunner, oh. saw that TikTok that I made, and then she saw the other TikToks and realized that you saw the family, and she was like, oh, my God, this is a show. And then she and she was um, an executive producer, co-executive producer on The Connors, and Bruce Helford was a co-creator on George Lopez. So it was, like, yeah. a really weird kismet thing. And then we all got in a meeting together. Like, we would have never thought that's to. Awesome. Work that's together a, now, and it's kismet. Like, that's a, that's a, yeah. That's a big word. I, I, I that's never, hey, private. Saying. Hey, you that's went a, to the, he went to the that's the pri- a, that's comedy club so that word. he could go to private school. Kismet. You know, uh, so. Kismet. And, and mine's been funny forever. I mean, you know, you, you know, kids that are just different. They're just funny. Yeah, it's good to be funny. <clears throat> it is. It's good no. to be funny. I, I would not trade the ability to. I mean, I, in fifth grade. We would do the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then one day I said, they said, okay, class, the teacher was there. Everybody stand up. Put, and she would say, put your right hand over your heart. And before she said it, I said, put your right ball over your heart. <laughs> and the whole class started laughing. And she's like, what? What did you say? I didn't say anything. What, what did you say? The teacher, he said, put your right ball over your heart. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I went to the principal's office. I'm sitting, the principal comes in. I remember he had like notes of the thing. He goes, I understand uh, you think you're funny. I said, I, I, I don't know. What did you say? What did you say? I said, I didn't say anything. What did you say? I said, put your right ball under your, over your heart. <laughs> and the principal goes, that's it? You're in here for that? I said, yeah. <laughs> See, it's funny. Yeah, I had funny. a similar story. I, I, when I remember, I got, um, I, I would used to say everything. I used to, I had to create a filter in my head because I used yeah. to just like the first thing that. It's almost in like a witch when. And I wouldn't even know what I was saying, and then people would laugh. It was just something in, in school. And I remember one time I said something I don't even remember, and I got in trouble, and I went to the. No, the kids stole the soccer ball, and you said, "Stop being a bitch and give us the ball back." Yeah, <laughs> along other things, I was also Eight. just yeah. funny, you know. I was like trying to make funny things, and um, and that's comedic. Uh, that's comedic, sure, and um, potty for a seven humor, seven-year-old, and um, and so I got sent to the headmaster's office, and my mom picked me up at, from school, and so she was like, "So, mine, how did the how was school today?" And I was like, "Fine." And she was like, well, um, I heard that you called uh, so-and-so as like a son of a bitch. I was like, Mom, I can't help it. It just comes into my head, and I just think it's funny. And she's like, well, mine, you have to own what comes out of your mouth. Like, it was mean. I'm like, mean, but funny. Mm. And from there, I always go back to that story. So I had to tell her, like, you know, in Bewitched, they have Tabitha the baby. One day they see the baby go like this, and the bottle flies across the room. And then Bewitched says, i got to have a talk with her because she has power that that i have you know the witches so i remember uh, she did an episode where she says you have to be very careful about what you do with this and i had to tell Mayan that yeah. things are going to come into your head but be careful what you say because they could be funny but also they could hurt people too i, mean, I, I hurt a lot of people but know. you know but i mean You're like don't you do it to comedy st- <laughs> it stings it hurts sometimes and i think you know now with the way that people i mean I told a joke that I've got the fucking Secret Service to come to my house. And you're like, what the, f-? I mean, I'm really, are we really in this fucking world? Yep. And they had everything that I had ever retweeted, you know, on 
on yeah, on, and I can ask on you Twitter. This question also, Melissa, because I've asked him is like, you know, do you write material with the fear of getting canceled, or do you no. think of is that does that no. or does that affect your material anymore, or no? I mean, for me, my my bits are kind of childlike anyway, so yeah. I don't think I think that way. And I could feel it too, if like even if I'm trying to talk about dirty things on stage i can't get too far because <laughs> yeah. i start getting uncomfortable and the crowd could feel it and like oh she can't do this <laughs> oh, God, no, i can't i can't hey, do it that's a great funny. job that's funny <laughs> but every time it's like oh that's that it feels mean or or i hurt at afterwards i'm like that's mm-hmm. not gonna work has anna navarro navarro seen you do her impression I saw oh that. yeah she loves it She's cool. She's that's, like, you can imitate me anytime. Like she, I, I mean, like, that's how I heard her, her, her message yeah, me, you know? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I think it's so funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's cool. And she loves it. That's your friend from Florida? <laughs> yeah, she was yeah. in here. She was in here with us. Yes. Oh, <laughs> man. She oh, is hilarious. funny. She really is. She's funny. But. Oh. oh. What time is it? Oh, it's five o'clock. Oh man, oh. it went fast. It went fast. Um, yeah, okay. Um, well, <laughs> it's an honor. I mean, it's really. the plug, Melissa? I, my book comes out at the end of the month. It's called Whoops, I'm Awesome. And it's all with my artwork, oh, and great. it's funny, and it's a little self helpy, but it's also. What, what, is your art, what is your artwork about? It's, um, I would compare it to like Shel Silverstein artwork, where it's simple but meaningful, you know, childlike. I'll get you guys a, a copy. That'll be amazing. For sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that comes out October 25th, and I'm, I'll be doing like a little book tour, stand-up tour. Okay, yeah. good. And you have a podcast. And I have a podcast with eight, uh, all things comedy. Can I do too. your podcast? Well, it's called Laughing with Myself, so it's only me. Oh, fuck it then. <laughs> <laughs> ah! You can be a I like guest. It. No, no, no. George you don't Lopez have got turned down. Okay. Oh, I thought you know. I don't what? have guests. Though. I know, but I know. I thought you got mad. I mean, no, I didn't get mad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next one I do, I'll be laughing by myself. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like 14, 15 minutes. Sometimes. All right. Thank you for coming in. I mean, I appreciate it. I'll see you again. I hope, I hope that we can yeah. see you. Uh, Hell yeah. Because we almost feel like, you know, we're family. We're mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Pioneers here. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.